By default, a custom block theme doesn't come with any installed fonts. So it's essentially a vanilla theme, if you like. Now this means that any text font will likely fall back to the browser's default font, which in most cases is probably going to be Times New Roman. For example, currently this text is showing as a serif font, probably Times, and in Firefox, I can go to the settings and change the default font to Arial, and then reload my site. You'll see that the text now uses Arial, as the fallback browser font. This is an important point to be aware of because if you register a font that isn't referenced somewhere as a style, then your theme is likely to fall back to the browser's default font settings. So as I mentioned, a vanilla custom block theme doesn't come with pre-installed fonts. So you'll need to manually register them. And to do this, go to your theme.json file and under settings and in typography, add the property font families. Now this property is an array that takes a set of objects that represent fonts. And within each object, the required properties are font family, name and slug. Now these are the basic entry level property parameters for fonts. Now there is an optional property called font face and this is for fonts that are bundled with your theme, but I'll save that for the next video. So when only using system fonts in the font family property, you should define a primary font followed by any fallback fonts and ultimately finish off with a generic font. So in this example, I'm using Arial as the primary font, Helvetica as the fallback font and a generic sans serif font as the final fallback if none of the specified fonts are available in the user's system fonts. And this is a standard CSS pattern. Now add the name property, which will be used throughout the back end of the site in drop down menus and labels, etc. And for simplicity, I'll call this body and I'll also set the slug name to the same, but in lowercase. So after saving the theme.json file to apply it to your theme, pop back to the editor and you might expect this font to update immediately, but it won't. And that's because it still needs to be added to the style property in the theme.json file to tell WordPress where to use it. Although I've included the font in the settings, I need to reference it accordingly. So go back to your theme.json file, scroll down to the style section and add a typography property. And this is an object where you simply add font family. And here is where you'll reference a CSS variable. And with CSS variables, they generally start with var. Then in brackets, you use the standard WordPress prefix for internal CSS variables. And they are always prefixed with hyphen hyphen WP hyphen hyphen preset hyphen hyphen, followed by the specific CSS property name. So in this case, it would be font family, followed by the slug of the font you included in your settings, separated with double hyphens. So in this case, it's body. So in full, it's var, open brackets, hyphen hyphen WP, hyphen hyphen preset, hyphen hyphen font hyphen family, hyphen hyphen body, close bracket. Now the typography property in the style section will be hooked to the root level, meaning that everything in the site will use the body font configuration. Arial first, then Helvetica, and finally a generic font sans serif if none of the primary and fallback fonts were found. So save your theme.json file, return to the site, refresh the page, you should see that the site now uses a generic sans serif font, which it does. And we can take this one step further by adding another system font. Now the slug name doesn't really matter as long as it's referenced correctly in the CSS variable added to the style section. For example, I'll add another font. This time I'll add a common Mac font called Impact. So as before, I'll fall back to a sans serif if Impact isn't available. So I'll name this heading and set the slug to heading in lowercase as well. Now I need to go to the style section where I can target specific elements by adding the elements property. And again, specifically adding heading under the elements, then create another object to reference typography. And here I'll set the font family again using a variable prefixed with the standard WP variable format, var WP preset font family. This time I'll reference the heading, which matches the slug we defined earlier. So after saving these changes and returning to the site, any block heading will now use the impact font installed in my system. And if it doesn't exist, it will simply fall back to any sans serif font found in the system. So if I refresh the page, you'll see the heading fonts are now set in impact, which is a thick display font, while the paragraph block still remains as the basic sans serif font set as the body. And that's a very basic entry level overview of how to set your fonts up in a block theme. 
to use system fonts. And in the real world, you'd probably add a few more primary or fallback and generic fonts, but hopefully you get the gist. So as always, if you found this helpful, you can show your appreciation by clicking the like button and feel free to subscribe for more quick tips like this.